name is Maria Moriarty. I'm the events lead on the London WISH board and I'm the head of resident engagement and customer insight with Network Homes Housing Association. So firstly, welcome to our London WISH event. Great careers don't happen by accident. Push past your fears to reach yours. So we've got members from all different regions attending this event. So welcome to everybody. We've also got a full program of events scheduled. So do check out the events page on our website. So I've been working in the housing sector for over 14 years now. And although I felt I was progressing in my career and I was really enjoying my job, it wasn't until a couple of years ago when I decided to take the plunge and go for a role that I'd never done before that I realized that actually I was letting my own fear hold me back. So, you know, I was really comfortable in my role. I knew what I was doing, but I wasn't really pushing myself enough. So when my current role was advertised, I decided I was going to go for it, even though I had, it was a very little experience in. Um, and literally within a couple of months, I was thinking to myself, why have I not been doing this all along? Because I absolutely love my job and it's definitely where I'm meant to be. Um, so today we have Gemma Brown with us and she's going to help us to start to identify fears that might be holding us back in our own careers. So I'm going to pass over to Gemma now. Thanks, Maria. Um, and thanks for sharing. It certainly resonates with my story as well. So hi, everybody. It's uh, lovely to see so many faces um, here today. As Maria said, I'm um, Gemma Brown. I'm a personal business coach and I work mainly with women on career and life transitions to build confidence, develop leadership skills and manage well-being and um, work-life balance. So as Maria said, today we're talking about how can we take control of our careers and overcome some of those fears that hold us back. Um, when thinking about what to focus on today, there was so much I wanted to cram in. It's a, a subject I'm really passionate about based on my own experience. But I think the most valuable thing we can offer here is you to have the space to reflect on what's going on for your career and um, possibly identify some of those fears that might be just holding you where you are at the moment. In my experience, we're so busy that we don't prioritise that space for ourselves to think deeply about what we want next, to push ourselves or even allow ourselves to question what does success look like for me? And that lack of reflection time can be partly why we get stuck as well. So this is exactly your time to do that, to explore and be open. So just to quickly run through the format for today, um, during this session, firstly, I'm going to spend about 10 or 15 minutes sharing my own experience and some of the key themes that have um, come out from the women that I have worked with. And I'm not here to give career advice or what you should or shouldn't be aiming for in your career, but simply inviting you to reflect on what great looks like for you and question if you're really the one steering your career, driving forward, and if not, to think about well, what's possibly standing in your way of doing that. After um, my intro, we will break out uh, into some breakout groups for 10 minutes or so for you to share your experience and um, reflect on your career. Hearing and learning from others is really valuable at helping us reflect on our own situation. So I'm really excited that we can do a bit of that today. It is a safe space, so please um, feel free to share openly, but only share what you're feeling comfortable with. After the breakout sessions, we'll reconvene back and share some of the common themes over the chat function before, um, before we then summarise and, and wrap up. So I hope that's all makes sense. I hope that you feel that you're in the right place. That's what you signed up for. Um, before we get stuck in, we have got a couple of live polls that we want to, to get your views on just to get um, some feedback from the whole group. And so I think if we could have the first one um, and then we can share the results of that just before we go into, into the breakouts. You should be able to see the poll. Yeah, we got people voting. So three, five people have voted. Eight. We got 40 odd on the call. Great. 
I'm going to do thick and fast. Brilliant. And have we got the slides up on the screen as well? Yeah, once, once I've finished the poll, I'll, I'll, put, I'll publish the... So we've got 33 responses from 42 people keep, keep responding. 36, we're up to 37. So it'd be great if we could just a couple, couple of more answers. So here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch this now. Um, so I'm going to end the poll. We've got 38. Great. So, uh, share results. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, that's popped up here. So quite, uh, quite a mixed bag, actually, isn't it? So the question was on a scale of one to ten, how much does fear show up in your day-to-day -day working life? So one, never, to ten, every day. So yeah, quite a mixed bag. Majority of you sort of feeling about halfway there. Okay. So Brilliant, thank you. Um, if we go to slide three with the quote there. Um, so I led with this quote uh, for the blurb for the event and it's one from Cheryl Sandberg, COO of Facebook, uh, who many of you I'm sure is familiar with and, and possibly read her book, Lean In. And she talks extensively about women taking more of an active role in driving their careers forward and refusing to sit in the back seat and become a bit of a passenger for their own for their own jobs. This is something that really resonated with me, and I hope to share a bit of my experience, like Maria briefly did, to help maybe consider your position where you are now, and to consider is that is that where you want to be? Is there more that you want? Um, and then we'll come on to talk about um, fears and reflect on some of those as well. And so prior to becoming a coach, I um, left a role. I was a senior manager in a large national tourism business. And I'd worked there for almost 10 years and just slowly sort of progressed up the ranks. But I look back and I think, well, I'm not really sure how I got there. Um, it's a bit like when you're, you're driving to work and you arrive at the office and you can't really remember all the turns that you, you take you've taken, you can't remember the roundabouts, you just kind of arrived. And I'd achieved a lot during that time, but I really allowed myself to be guided by those around me rather than consciously setting out my own career path. And I would repeatedly say things like, I've had some great opportunities, I'm so grateful to be here, um, they probably took a chance on me, and I'm the best that they've got. And you can see how this use of language was quite passive. And where, so where did this come from? For me, taking control of the jobs that I applied for, the projects that I led, meant owning my choices. And I was petrified that I would make a choice and then change my mind. So the fear of making the wrong decision and letting others down kept me quite passive and passing over the responsibility to other managers and peers around me. I never took the time to really explore where those fears came from and so instead I let others signpost me towards jobs they thought I'd be good at. Um, my line managers pushed me in certain directions and I, I went with it. Um, they volunteered me for projects and I let the opportunities come to me. And I sort of continued in that way. While there was nothing wrong with that, when I had started to overcome my fears um, and drive myself towards the roles that I wanted, I got further, faster, and felt more fulfilled in the roles that I was doing. I had, it was only sort of during that time that um, I kept coming back to the question, what would I do if I wasn't scared? And so I ask you now just to sort of think about that question for yourself. What would you do if you weren't scared? In, in the later sort of stages of my career and working with the coach, I began to unpick some of those fears, take the time to think about what was important to me, to focus on my strengths and overcome my fears. 
I started to believe that I had the ability to make those changes for myself. And with that belief, I, as I say, I, I got there faster and I felt more fulfilled and satisfied in the work that I was doing. I felt a real connection with that role. Working with other women now in their careers and their journeys, I see so many um, sort of similar situations of them sort of passively sitting back, waiting for a door to open so then they can walk through it rather than opening the door themselves. And there are lots of reasons for this, but I'm sort of frequently seeing three key themes um, coming up. Uh, next slide, please. The first one is. Oh, have you got that? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, yeah, so there's sort of three areas, uh, key themes. Um, first is a lack of self belief, a lack of confidence, those imposter syndrome type feelings of being a fraud or not being good enough. And if you know you experience this, you're certainly not alone. How this transpires, for example, is that women will sort of look at a job description and if there is just one um, skill or piece of experience that they're not an absolute expert in, reject the idea of applying straight away. But men, on the other hand, will look at that job description and if they can do around 70% of it, they'll go for it. Uh, and they believe they can learn the things that they don't know. Compared with men, women don't really consider themselves as ready for promotions. They predict they'll do worse on tests and consider, sort of generally underestimate their abilities and skills. This disparity stems from a number of factors from upbringing to biology and environment. And there's a body of evidence that shows how the impact of this lack of confidence can have um, in moving towards individual career success. So that's the first one. Um, the second one I see really regularly showing up is self-care. I wasn't really sure what to categorise this as, um, but it stems from women, we don't give ourselves the time. So making decisions about your career or overcoming your fears, it can take time and reflection. And as you all know, you know life is busy, um, it's full on. So when we don't have that space, we don't consider what possibilities there could be for us. There are also so many distractions coming from all directions and it's easy to do nothing, procrastinate or just accept that this is how I am. When we begin to create that space though, we can allow ourselves to visualize what that success could be and explore what's important to you, assessing your needs, prioritizing your self-care and look sort of internally at what motivates you and work on building up that self-belief. And the third one, and what we're talking about really today is fear. So, um, what is fear? Uh, and um, I thought a lot about this because it's, it can be all encompassing, but fear is really um, an emotional reaction to a danger or a threat. And it's how we can sense when we're in trouble, our body reacts, we get nervous in our tummy, um, we might sweat. Um, but when, when we feel that, we then can act accordingly. Next slide, please. So fear, it's supposed to feel uncomfortable because when we come across this, uh, a real danger like this bear, for example, uh, we can act and run away or freeze depending on um, what you think you should do when you see a bear. But the difference um, we're talking about here uh, with the career is that we still get that same feeling, our body reacts in the same way but is the fear really dangerous? Next slide, please. Um, I love this, uh, this acronym here. So fear, false evidence appearing real. This is what a lot of our um, fears around pushing ourselves or taking control uh, comes from. 
So for example, you may want to progress in your career, speak up in a meeting, change roles, get promoted, challenge an opinion with a colleague or disagree with something to improve a result, but you notice that fear prevents you from doing so. Common um, fears that we talk about and come across, fear of making the wrong decision, as, as I said, that was a big one for me. Fear of not being good enough. The fear of rejection, what if I don't get the job? Fear I might fail, a fear of looking stupid or saying the wrong thing or a fear of conflict. Being aware of that fear and then examining it for what it really is usually shows that it is based on um, an unhelpful narrative rather than actual truth. Rarely these fears are evidence based. When we delve a bit deeper and look at them, they really fail to demonstrate any evidence. So no, um, no examples of failure in the past or rejection. No examples that something disastrous has happened if I had changed my mind in the past. It is uncomfortable feeling, but being aware of that particular fear means that you can start to break it down you can take away its power and you can put practices in place to reduce, reframe or remove that fear completely, enabling you to move forward. You can control the fear rather than it controlling you. And when I notice a fear now, I really try to ask myself, what is this fear based on? Where is the evidence? So that is a little um, insight into my own experience there. Um, so next slide, please. We are going to break out into small groups, as we mentioned at the beginning. Before we do that, I want to invite you to spend um, three minutes just making some notes quietly to yourself on a couple of questions. I'm going to pop on the screen shortly. So. Just spend a few minutes just reflecting on your career where you're at now and any fears that have maybe resonated with you as I've been talking or you've already got things in mind. We're then going to take 10 minutes to break out into groups of three or four to share your experiences, share your reflections within that group and you'll get a sort of two minute warning I think when we're going to come back into the larger group. If you could, could you nominate somebody within that group who could collate any themes coming out and we'll type those themes in the chat when we come back to a group as a whole. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to reflect privately. The slide, the questions are going to come up on the next slide and then we're going to pop you into smaller groups to discuss your reflections on those questions and then we will reconvene. So next slide please which should have the questions. I will time you for three minutes. What fears do you recognise that are holding you back in your career and if this didn't exist what would you do? So just take a few moments to give that some consideration.
break out rooms are ready when you want to go, Gemma. So another 15 seconds. Okay. Okay, so a sign should come up on your, an invitation on your screen. You'll be invited into a breakout room. If you accept the invitation, you'll go into a breakout room. There should be four in a room, four of you. And then I will give you a two minute warning. So you've got 10 minutes in the breakout room. So the invite's coming up now. Hi all. Hello. I I got so we've got quite a few that have they joined? Yeah, I think I think everyone's joined now, have they? Yeah, there's been a few connection issues. Um someone's just posted one as well. Um but I think yeah. everyone can have gone into the breakout rooms now. Yeah, yeah, they they've all yeah. 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 But that's why I had to do it manually because I didn't want all of us to go to Yeah, <laughs> well that's good. Um, all right, so, so shall I assign you to breakout rooms? Give them a minute and then I'll assign you. I'll time yeah. it 10 minutes. Oh, I'll yes. time it eight minutes and then give them a warning. Mm -hmm. So you had about 50 on, you've got on. At 42? I saw 42, so minus us would be 37. Ah, uh, well, they must have, well, we must have, we lost a couple of people, I think. Yeah, the last count I saw was 42. Yeah, well, it was up to, to 49. Ah, uh, okay. Is that your usual sort of dropout rate, do you think? Yeah. With the online sessions? Yeah. I think that's just, to be honest, that's with um, even face-to-face -face events. We always have quite a huge, not huge, but like we still have a number of people that drop out that don't come up for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, Maria, Maria you said that this morning, but I was being very optimistic. I thought because <laughs> we had about 100 registers. So I thought, OK, 70. But Maria said <laughs> no. probably about 50. What did you say? About 40, I think I 50? said about 50, yeah. Yeah, so um, <laughs> my optimism there again. <laughs> All right, so I pop you in. There's seven minutes left now to the warning. So we've got. Yeah. Yeah. So are you sure? Is everybody happy? So I'm going to assign you all to. So you get the invite come up. Okay. Again, so you all came back in. Were you all in the same room? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So we just, it's a minute before they automatically close. So we just wait for everybody to come back in from the breakout rooms. Just keep an eye on who's back in the room. So we've still got a few still in the breakout rooms. Was that was that fun, everybody? Nice to speak to people yes. from different places. Yeah. Taking the There you go. We're all back now. So back to you, Gemma. Brilliant, thank you. Welcome back everybody. Um, that was really great to hear. I was sort of earwigging on one of the groups and there's just so many, so much commonality um, and so much value in sharing experiences and, and normalizing the fear there as well. So really thank you for contributing to that. Um, 
it would be great to hear some of your um, things that happened in your group. If you just pop some notes in the chat, if you can, any anything that stood out for you in your group. Um, some things I was overhearing was about um, how important it is to have that wider support in your colleagues um, who believe in you. So, you know, they, they're there to pick you up um, in those moments of self-doubt. Things like um, remembering to talk to ourselves the way we would a colleague as well. So when we have a bit of a wobble, we don't sort of fall into that spiral of self-doubt and let the fear own us, but actually we're talking kinder to ourselves. So um, yeah, please do share any of your thoughts in the chat as well about themes that were coming out in your discussions. Um, one a great suggestion that I was overhearing as well was about um, not automatic, you know, if we do experience a failure or a rejection or we don't get the job, to not, um, not live by that, but actually turn it around and think, how can I learn? What can I learn from this? How can I, um, how can I do better? Um, they're just picking out some great comments coming out here. Um, fear makes you talk yourself out of opportunities. Yeah, so you rely on people to support you, but should support yourself even more. Absolutely. Um, another common one that we were talking about was around when you've been in a team a long time and you get on really well with your colleagues, you, they, that fear of letting people down. Um, and so it holds you back from putting yourself first. But actually the group saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting yourself first. And actually if your colleagues and friends cared about you, they would want you and support you to do that. Fear of meetings, if slightly introvert, then really difficult to speak up. Lack of people encouraging everyone to speak. Uh, yeah, I've seen that quite a lot actually in meetings seem to be dominated by particular confident people or um, people more familiar with that environment so changing the way we facilitate meetings and actually encouraging people to to all have a voice can um, is really important in doing that and encouraging people to take different roles you know play the the person who's disagreeing or play the supporter of the opinion so that you get to try on these different hats try it out for size uh, some great conversations here. Um, fear of jumping ship, leaving what you're comfortable with, doing something new, decision making. Is it the right thing? Will I look silly? Yeah, that's that, that was exactly what's happening in our group as well. And, and if you progress in your career, you worry about the team you've left behind. This is brilliant. Have we got on to some of the, um, what would you do if you had no fear? So we, there are some great suggestions here, really brave stuff, just like by asking yourself that question. We in the group, they were talking about changing roles, um, working for yourself was another one, um, and people's body language were really coming to life and really changing as well. Um, uh, just complete career changes if that fear wasn't there. And it's really interesting how much we let that fear dictate what we, we will, we won't do run a business full of feminists yes i love that one let's do that <laughs> fear of sounding silly yeah um there's some fantastic fantastic discussions i really hope you found that useful um and um I just wondered if anybody would want to, does anybody want to share anything from their group in particular that was particularly um, interesting? Does anybody want to sort of just yeah, summarise just... what was happening in the group? Yeah, brilliant. Go for it, Janice. Yeah, could I, as somebody said, and, and um, it was quite valid, it's that fear of um, if you move a role um, or even company, organization you worry about the rest of the team you've left behind so it's that guilt isn't it um 
And that I thought that was really interesting. Instead of thinking, okay, they're a fantastic team, but my next team might be absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, that, that I think I was overhearing that as well and coming to the, dis the discussion of well, that fear of thinking about other people, you know, if, if um, that stops you putting yourself first and how you know, it's, it's a you know, great trait to have, isn't it, about putting others first, but when that comes to holding you back from your dreams or a role that may be more than t authentic to you or you may have more passion about, um, where's the line there? I just say as well on, on ours that was an interesting bit of a journey in that we talked about that fear of not having the knowledge to begin with or not the same knowledge that other people have and you might have had a different background to them you might not be as technical and then you have this fear that you've only done that role for so long so how can you change it and then then you get the fear that you're now too old to move on from so at every stage you're actually putting a blocker in because it's never quite you can always find that concern along the journey that mm. at that fear you've not got what was necessary or, or or you know the last one was that you're now the wrong age to be um changing careers and taking another leap mm. and so it actually it was never the right time yes yeah and that's I, I yeah hear that so much particularly with women sort of either changing a job or starting something new they they kind of say to themselves i'm starting from scratch so um move on something i've started i've got to start from the beginning but we forget about all of the ex all of the experience all of the knowledge all of the the skills that we have that comes with us we don't leave that at the door when we start something new that is what makes us truly unique in the roles that we do but we forget all of that when you start a new job or you rock up as a new company or something. Um, we really downplay that. It comes back to that men versus women thing that we, we just underestimate our abilities and we discount a lot. Um, what we need to do is start seeing is it's all part of the process. This is all leading us to bigger, better, more things um, rather than um, yeah, leaving that all at the door when we start something. I did exactly the same when I retrained. I, um, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm starting from scratch. I'm, you know, all of my experience I'm just leaving behind. But actually, all of my experience managing teams and working with people like, that really added to me and my strengths and skills as a coach. So um, we really need to start, yeah, shift, shifting that. Brilliant. Thank you. That's such great. I really wish we could capture all of that. Um, those suggestions in the in the chat. I wonder if it's worth just like noting down something that that's really stood out for you so that you remember this when you look back at your notebook tomorrow or something, you know, what are you taking away from this? What are you going to do now? Um, I wanted to just move on to the next slide. That's definitely got our juices flowing and, and you know, this is just a taster for today. Um, but hopefully this gives you a bit of a springboard to, to recognize that, um, you may have a bit of fear, but we all experience that, but you can start to move past it. Um, and I've got this quote here from Susan Jeffers, who's written a few books you may have read, feel the fear and do it anyway, which is great in essence, isn't it? But if it was that easy, we, we wouldn't have any fear. So, um, so what can we do about it? One of the first steps to move forward is definitely building that awareness around the fear that you've got, which is exactly what we started doing here today. So understanding what that fear is, getting familiar with it, not brushing it aside or just accepting that it's there and that's how I am. Talking about it openly with colleagues, journaling when you notice when at the times that it appears picking up any, there are any themes to it or in those times that you do let yourself you know dream about starting that feminist business or um you know going for a director role notice that fear coming in what is it start to get curious about uh where it stems from and remember to ask that question where is the evidence and also really like some of the suggestions that came up today about, you know, talking to yourself like you would a colleague. So becoming aware, definitely first step. Secondly, we need to practice 
ways to remove it, reduce it, or to reframe the narrative. For example, I fear I won't be good enough. We can switch it to, I am good enough and I will continue to learn. In safe spaces, we can practice pushing past the fear. Talked about the meeting, you know, are there opportunities to um, change the facilitation of meetings or to speak up in smaller groups with trusted colleagues? And questioning, what would I do if I wasn't scared? Finally, celebrating our successes. Look at the evidence of your achievements, of your progress, your strengths, reminding yourself of your skills and all of that knowledge, like we just talked about, that is uniquely yours and that you're bringing. Because it's different or because it's not the same as it, somebody else's, that's unique, that's your strength. Um, a colleague of mine told me about a happy folder that they created just in their inbox. So every time that they get a good piece of feedback or somebody says great job or um, they, they pull that email into their happy folder. And it's a quick reference to look back on when they are having a bit of a wobble. All of that great feedback is there. And I really love that idea, whether you create it online or, or an actual paper copy. So yeah, celebrating success. We need to do more. We need to... Uh, recognize our achievements and that will build us up to overcome those fears and move forward but importantly do not let your fear stand in your way take the driving seat own your career and own your successes i think um we were going to have a final poll just to see um how we are feeling sort of just having explored those thoughts for ourselves so could, if we could share that now, that would be super. This is sort of coming to the end of the session, really. Um, has anybody got any sort of final questions they wanted to pop in the or pop in the chat? Questions or reflections? Inspiring quotes? Please, please do while we get the the poll popping up. Oh, here we go. Brilliant. We're 19 in, 20, going up fast. So we've got 41 people on, 30 have responded. So if you keep going and then I'll publish. So 34, 35, just six more to vote. Maybe that will We'll go with that, 36, so let's end poll, 38, share results. There we go. Brilliant, that's great, really positive. Um, lots of people feeling, have got a better understanding of how to overcome your fear. I really would encourage you to just like capture now um, what's standing out for you? What, what do you need to do to start to overcome that so that, um, we don't get back into our work after this session and forget uh, about how inspired we're feeling. So um, love a good book recommendation, growth mindset. Thank you, Alison. That's really useful, really useful conversation. Be brave, absolutely. Hope and fear cannot occupy the same space. Really like that, thank you. You're definitely not alone. And that's why I, I think these um, group sessions are really powerful because we can all share and support each other. Um, and there's so much to be gained from uh, sharing in our experience and knowing we are not alone. Uh, more tactics. Can you share the slides? Definitely can share the slides. I'll share those with Wish and um, more tactics overcoming the fear i'm sure we can certainly do that and i'll add those on onto this to the slides um that just brings me wrapping up really thank you so much it's been such a great session really interactive thank you for being so open and sharing your experiences and, uh, and um thank you also to wish for having me it's been a really uh, great session if you do want to connect I'm sure I've just popped on the last slide my contact details if anybody has any further questions or wants to continue the chat 
afterwards um do do feel free to email me or um, do often share some posts and things around confidence and and women in business on linkedin so it'd be great to connect um and if not um it would be great to to see you another time so thank you very much hope you found that useful i'll pass you back to to tracy okay thank you Gemma. thank you everybody it was a great session so thanks for that i'm just going to finish with a really short story um and I, um just around leadership so i work i'm working doing some leadership development um at the moment and i was on a class um and they were all going to present and there was probably about 12 there. And every single female before they presented said, oh, it's gonna be boring. I didn't have time to present. So they, they all, not one did not put themselves down. And at the end of their presentations, we were completely moved. They were absolutely brilliant because they came from the heart. And so every single one thought it was gonna be, or talked about it being rubbish, and it wasn't. And, it, and I think we think we're in 2020 and surely we're in a place where we can take our humility, our feminine view of the world and bring it without making excuses before we speak up. And so that would be my heartfelt sort of plea to you all is to just believe um, what's the best that can happen for you. And don't uh, do that knocking yourself and just go for it because it, it, you, you're probably all great. So that would be my, my parting message. So thank you, Gemma, and thank you for everyone for joining us. Do keep an eye on the website. Thank you, Maria, who's on here. I can't really see her, who's hosted this event, and the other team, Alexandra and Jacqueline, for organising it all. And we hope to see you all at our next event. So take, you can come off mute and you can say goodbye to us all. And I'm going to take a picture of the screen. So, so wave to me and I'll take the picture.